This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Naughty Bucket Chronicles. If you follow my channel, you are almost certainly familiar with Bosnian Bill, his excellent YouTube channel, and his infamous Naughty Bucket. That's where Bill keeps locks that have thus far resisted his picking efforts. Well, in my recent visit to Bill's lock lab, he graciously allowed me to select several locks from the Naughty Bucket for me to try at home. And this is one of those locks. It's a deceptively easy looking Tung Shing brand motorcycle disc brake lock. Now at first glance, this looks like a pretty innocuous six pin lock, but it took me longer to open this lock than any other Naughty Bucket lock I've tried thus far. So what makes it so tricky? Well, the tolerances on this are pretty mediocre, and while it does have spools, they don't account for the roughly three hours I spent to open this for the first time. And I probably never would have opened it if I didn't have a bit of an epiphany. The trick to this lock is entirely in the key pins. I probably should have realized this earlier because they're shaped exactly like I used to shape key pins back when I used to make challenge locks. I actually drew a picture here. The beveled portion up on top does two things. First, it gets stuck in the shear line, and second, it induces counter rotation when you probe a set pin. It's similar to what you might feel when you are trying to set a spool. Then we have this notch in the key pin, which simulates the setting of a spool and also keeps the key pin trapped in an overset position. In fact, if we look carefully at this, you can actually see a little bit of that shape on the front key pin. Now those key pins in conjunction with two nearly zero lift pins, if you see them in positions two and three, they make for an absolutely dastardly combination. However, once I knew what to feel for, the lock opened with relative ease. I won't say it was easy. It certainly required a little bit of doing to pick, but it also didn't take another three hours. So all of that said, let's get to picking. I'm using top of the keyway tension with one of these flat five tensioners and this medium hook from Southord's Max Collection. Nothing on one, nothing on two, nothing on three, nothing on four. I think five is binding a bit. Got to click out of him, hit six, and we just dropped into a false set. Counter rotation on one. Nothing on two, three, four, five, or six. Now I did something to lose my false set. I may have overset something a bit. So I'm gonna pulse my tension. As I mentioned, those beveled tops sometimes get stuck in the shear line. So I'm gonna be releasing tension quite a few times as I go through this, trying to address that if it does happen. Okay, nice click out of six. Nothing on one, two, three, four, five. Another click out of six. And I'm not sure what is keeping us from getting our false set back right now. I suspect something's overset, so let's release a little tension. We got a little bit of a false set back. Three, up oh, number four. And there we go, got it open. So as you saw, it wasn't too bad once I knew what to feel for. However, this lock is a great example of how knowing what type of pins to expect is oftentimes more than half the battle. In any case, that's all I have for you today. Bill, once again, thank you so much for giving me a shot at the naughty bucket. To everyone else, if you do have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe, and as always, have a nice day. Thank you.